أبدع الأفلاك والأرضين والصلاة على من كان نبيا وآدم بين الماء والطين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ثاني اثنين إذ هما في الغار إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا آمنت بالله صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاكرين والشاهدين والحمد لله رب العالمين ببركة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما فرشرف الله مصطي على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيقنا ومولانا محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات Each and every one of you join in As-salatu wassalamu alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya sayyidi ya habib Allah As-salatu wassalamu alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya sayyidi ya rahmatan lina wa'alameen One more time, please, a bad commotion. As-salamu alayka, ya Sayyidi, ya Rasulullah, wa ala alika wa sahabika, ya Sayyidi, ya Khatman wa Nabi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. After praising Allah Almighty, Jalla Ba'ala, Malika Kainat, Khalika Kul, Badi'u Samawati wal Arb, and sending infinite peace and salutations, durood and salawat upon the best of creation, the light of creation, the purpose of creation. Sayyid al-Awwaleen wal-Akhirin, Imam al-Anbiya wal-Mursaleen, Subhan Madina, Nur Sina, Huzur Jane Jana, Rasul Akram, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam. Honorable and respectable, Ulamai Karam, Bil Khusus, Hazrat Alama Mufti Muhammad Azam Saab, Zid Asharfuhu, Bani Mahfil, Hazrat Alama Maulana Shah Baz Saab, or the Honorable, Respectable, Walid Muhtaram, Hazrat Qibla Sufi Nur Muhammad Saab, Damat Barkatum Al Aliya Wal Qudsiya, Honorable Elders, Brothers, Lovable youngsters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Time doesn't permit to go into too much of an intro. Bilal Tamheed, each and every one of us is fully aware that we are gathered here to remember the greatest personality after the Anbiya and Mursaleen أفضل البشر بعد الأنبياء بالتحقيق بلا فصل سيدنا أبو بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه. His achievements, his teachings, his sacrifices for Deen Islam. In reality, I and nobody else can do justice to. Whatever we mention is a few manifestations just to give us an understanding in relation to the greatness and maqam martaba of Sayyiduna Siddiqui Akbar of the Yaddaw who born two years and a few months after the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Remember, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the year of the elephant. Al-Bakta, 55 days after the incident when Abraha, the governor of Yemen, came with an army of 300,000 soldiers and a thousand elephants with the intention to destroy the Ka'bah al-Sharifah. 
So now we just start to start with born in the year of the elephant. Amul Feel. Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala who, who is the junior of Nabi Salatu Salam, was born two years and a few months after Huzur Jane Jana Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Born in the city of Makkah al-Mukarrama, that city that Allah Almighty picks a custom by in the Quran, when he says, La uqasimu bihad al-balad, wa anta hillum bihad al-balad, wa walidim wa ma balad. Siddiq Akbar Radiyallahu is born in the same city as the city of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yani the city of Makkah Tul Father's name is Uthman. Urf and they were known by the title the Naqab Abu Uhafa. Mother's name was Sal Salma Binti Sahar. Salma Binti Sahar. But at this point I want to mention so this comes a lot later. I'm just going through the uh, basics of the biography of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But I want to mention at this point that Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is the only Sahabi whose four generations all accepted Islam upon the hands of Rasulullah <laughs> They had the sharaf and honor of doing the ziyarat of the Waddu Hajjera, one day Zulfa of Rasulullah sallallahu and they all accepted Islam and Iman upon the hands of Rasulullah <laughs> And if both parents accepted Islam. Khud Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar ta'ala anhu, as we know, the first man to accept Islam. Then his children, Sayyidina Asma bint Siddiq, or Sayyidina Aisha, Ummul Mu'mineen radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. And later his son Abdurrahman, they all accepted Islam upon the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu <laughs> Fourth generation was him, the grandson of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Zubair, one of the three Abdullahs, Abdullah bin Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyiduna Zubair bin Abbam, one of the Ashra Mubashra, married Sayyiduna Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, whose daughter Sayyiduna Asma bin Siddiq. And their son was Abdullah. Uh, that very same Abdullah, that when he was born, he was brought into the laps of Rasulullah sallallahu And Nabi sallallahu alayhi took a kujur, a date, and placed it in their blessed mouth. And with their ruwa bidahan, then took that, uh, that date, that kujur, and placed it inside the mouth of Abdullah bin Zubair Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Char pushto, four generations. And no other sahabi, no other companion has this sharaf for honor except for Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. And when we look and compare Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who to that Nabi he is similar to in terms of personality, in terms of maqam wa martaba. Allah Hazrat Azim wa Barakat, Mujaddid al-Din wa Millat, Mawlana Shah Ahmad Riza Khan alayhi rahmat wa ridwan mentioned that in terms of personality, in terms of akhlaq, in terms of kirdar, in terms of suluk, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq's character was very similar to that of Khalidullah Ibrahim alayhi salam. Or Sayyiduna Umar Faruq radiyallahu ta'ala who known for their jalal, their character was very similar to that of Kalimullah Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam. And make this comparison, Siddiq Akbar Char Pushto, all of them accepted Islam and Iman upon the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. If you look at Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam, his son was a Nabi, Ishaq alayhi salam. Then his son was a Nabi, Ya'qub alayhi salam. Then his son was a Nabi, Yusuf alayhi salam. Wo vichar pushto, ye vichar pushto. Batore nisbat, batore nisbat. Barad, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, before he accepted Islam, and remember, Nabi Rasulat wa salam, in ilan in Nabuwa to Risalat, at the age of 40. That does not mean he was not a prophet prior to that. Some people will go around propagating this false batil aqeedah that Ma'adam that Nabi Islam was not a prophet of Allah before the age of 40. But remember, Mata waja patla kan nububa. Ya Sahiri Bayat, Jamil Dilmizi Sharif, Kutubul Ahadif, Mimojud Ha. Sayyidina Abu Huraira Radi Allah Ta'ala Anu Zaradi. Qadi Yad Rahmatullah Alayhi who also passed away this month of Jamaat Dustani. They do not know this rewrite in the Ashifa Bita'ri Fi Hukuk Al-Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
the Nabi Rasulullah was asked the question that Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habiballah, when was prophethood decreed upon you? Subhanallah. So, that when were you a prophet of Allah? When was prophethood decreed upon you? Hamara Aqida, Aqida Ya Sunnati Wal Jamaat is in the answer of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kuntu Nabi Jan wa Adamu Bain al Ruhi wal Jasad. Subhanallah. Nabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I was a prophet of Allah. I was a bolo bolo. I was a prophet of Allah. But Adam Alayhi Salam was between spirit and body. Subhanallah. And Jasad. And that's when Nabi Rasulullah Sallallahu was a prophet of Allah. Ajkal ye shararat that some people try to do. And Batil people, whose Aqida is Batil, whose Soch is Batil, who try to misguide, Apu Hud misguided, Baal Mutil, Apu Hud misguided, and then try to misguide others as well. This is why my youngsters were listening to me, listen very carefully. When it comes to Aqida, there is no compromise on this particular issue. And Aqida is based upon Nasul Quran. Aqida is based upon the ayat of the Quran, or verses of the Quran. And Aqeedah is based upon what Rasulullah told you and me. What the Sahaba Ikram believed. Before the announcement of Nabuwat al Risalat, before the age of 40, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were best friends. You see, before Alani Nabuwat al Risalat, understand this, they were already best friends. They were already. Uh, Companions with one another, Rafiqs with one another. Oh, Al Batta, uh, Sayyida Salma bint Sahar, the mother of Siddiq Akbar, radiallahu ta'ala, who she says that the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Huzur Jane Jana, Rasul Akram, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala, who they were like twin brothers. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Who is saying this? Twin brothers. The mother of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq is saying that both of them, they were so close in their companionship, so close in their sohbat, so close in their rifaqat with one another, that they were like twin brothers. That's how close they were to one another. Before the announcement of Nabuwat or Risalat, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who did not get involved in the evils or vices of Dore Jahariyat. He did not drink, he did not fornicate, he did not compose any poetry, he did not idol worship, he refrained from such things. And when Nabi Rasulullah did eventually announce the Nabuwat or Risalat, it's agreed upon, uh, and this reconciliation is done by Sayyiduna Imam A'zam, Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah that the first Woman to accept Islam was Sayyida Qayyibah Tahira Khatijatul Gubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Nare takbeer, nare risala, nare risala, nare hadari, jani siddiqi akbar, ulamai ala sunnat. The company of Muhakkake Britannia, Hazrat Alama Zafar Mahmoud Farashvi, Dalat Barkat Muna Ali Abal Kutsiya, with Hazrat Sijazat. I have 10 minutes left. Uh, we are just scratching the surface. Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar, as I was saying, the first woman to accept Islam was who? Sayyida Khatija Tul Kubra. And who does this reconciliation? Who gives us this understanding? Imam A'zam, Sayyidina Nukman bin Thabit, Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah. That the first woman to accept Islam was Sayyidina Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha. The first man to accept Islam was none other than Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. The first child to accept Islam at the age of 10 was Sayyiduna Ali Murtaza, Mulai Kainat, Mulai Kul radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the first free slave to accept Islam was Sayyidina Zayd bin Harith. Sayyidina Zayd bin Harith was the first free slave to accept Islam. These, first, these four individuals were the first individuals to accept Islam and Iman upon the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar accepted Islam, 
Imam Jalaluddin Asriyuti mentions in the Tariq al-Khulafa and other Qutub. I do not of this as well. That when Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala who accepted Islam, he had in his possession 40,000 dirhams. 40,000 dirhams. Dirham dinar, currency of that time. And every single gold coin that he had, every single piece of gold coin that he had, he spent in the way of Islam. He spent in the way of Islam. Do not hesitate. Do not think twice. Whenever Nabi Islam needed financial support, the first person to support him was none other than Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq. This is why Nabi Islam says nobody's wealth benefited him more than the wealth of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Nobody's wealth. Jamil Tirmizi Sharif, Fadail Sahaba of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal and other Qutub al Ahadith do not this revival. And nobody's wealth benefited Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam more than the wealth of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq And he was responsible. He was responsible for buying out many individuals who were in slavery. Famously, he was responsible for buying the freedom of Sayyidina Bil Ali. Habshi radiallahu ta'ala. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who was the first individual to pray with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he was that individual who did not reject the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Nabi salatu wasalam himself said, who's come of home, that everyone else rejected me but Abu Bakr Siddiq did not reject. Everyone else rejected me. People threw stones at him. People placed thorns in his path, uh, path. people insulted the Prophet alayhi salam, people called him a magician, uh, the kuffar in Makkah uh, ridiculed the Prophet alayhi salam, put the Prophet alayhi salam down, but who did not leave his side? Abu Bakr as Siddiq yes. always take the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And we uh, I heard from Mulana Shabasa that this was the case later as well, after they had done hijrah, uh, the companion, the Individual who stayed with the Prophet alayhi salam Durani Hijrat, Tabil Baqiya, Bakr doesn't permit to go into all of that. But again, after Hijrat, in the Battle of Badr, in the Battle of Uhud, in the Battle of Khandaq, in the Battle of Khaybar, all of these great ghazbas and battles that Nabi Islam took part in, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq was on the right hand side of Rasulullah. Did not abandon Rasulullah. <laughs> I end up on this. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who is without doubt considered to be as I mentioned at the beginning. And this is the aqidah of the Ahli Sunnah Tibal Jama'ah. Oh, aqidah which uh, Wazit or Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal and uh, Imam of the Ahli Sunnah Tibal Jama'ah in the respective works mention and do not of different riwayat that the greatest human being, the greatest individual, after the Anbiya and Mursaleen, and Khastor in the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, unanimously agreed upon, and this agreement isn't just amongst the A'imma, this agreement is also, also amongst the Sahaba Ikram as well. Nare Takbir, Nare Risalat, Nare Risalat, Nare Hadari, Ulama al Sunnah. I was mentioning, we are blessed to have in our Mojudian presence the great Alim Adin, a servant of the Ahli Sunnati Wal Jamaat, Hazrat Allama, Peer Sahib Zada, Rafiq Ahmad Nakshbandi Mujaddadi Sahib, Dabit Barkatum Al Ali Abal Qudsiya. Through Mawlana Shah Basab, I became aware of the great services in Gujarabala in Pakistan and the khidmat to Deen Islam. Dinu dua yeha Allah tabarak wa ta'ala accepts all of their khidmat and Allah Almighty continues to bless the work that they are doing for the Ahli Sunnah people in Jamaat.
आज स्टॉप स्टार्ट ही है लाइक माय न्यू कार है स्टॉप स्टार्ट टेक्नोलॉजी सो वी आर गोइंग टू कंक्लूड बिकॉज़ टू स्पीक इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सच ग्रेट ओलमा इज बेअदबी एंड इट इज नॉट दी द असबाब दैट वी हैव लर्न फ्रॉम आवर साथीजा राजा वाज सेइंग and this is something that i want the youngsters in particular to attentively listen to that it is agreed upon unanimously not just amongst the aimma aimma e tarika taimma e shariyat but amongst the sahaba as well and bil khusus this aqeeda we take from sayyidina ali murtaza radiyallahu ta'ala that the greatest individual personality after the anbiya and mursalin is sayyiduna abu bakr as-siddiq radhiyallahu anhu hence why we refer to him by this laqab this title afdalul bashar ba'd al-anbiya or afdalul khalq ba'd ar-rusul the greatest human after the anbiya and mursalin and you might ask why and this is my concluding remarks Why is he considered to be the greatest individual personality, shaksiyat after the Ambiya and Mursali? And when you study his noble life, you come to the conclusion that there are three main reasons. How many? Bolo bolo, but there are three main reasons. Three main reasons. Number one, the first reason is in relation to what Hazrat was alluding to. and something that i've touched upon as well which is ba itibar e sohbat in relation to and in consideration to companionship sohbat and the pinnacle and peak of this sohbat were the three days and three nights that rasul akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam huzur jane jana and sayyiduna abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala who spent in the cave of Oh. And Hazrat was mentioning many for use of barakat were transferred sina to sina, and we heard from our Hazrat Sahab as well. Kibla Mufti Sahab and they were explaining what was transferred. They go the uh, what was transferred transpired when the Prophet Ali his salam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq arrived in Madina to Manawar. That the Ansar were not able to tell who was the Mola and who was the Gula. <laughs> and in order to make it clear to the people sayyidina abu bakr as siddiq took a cloth and placed it upon the blessed head of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said hada rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in such noor and such light was transferred that the people could not tell the difference they could not tell the difference between the maula and the khula yani rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and sayyiduna abu bakr as siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala yare ga and today yare mazar as well and the one who accompanied nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in that difficult journey from makkah to mukarramah to madina to munawwara and today the one who is resting next to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the first reason as to why he is afdal al bashar ba'd al anbiya is by itibar e suhbat in relation to companionship number 2 very quickly is ba itibar e qurbani in consideration or in relation to sacrifice and they go when you talk about sacrifice there are four main things that a person can sacrifice how many four watan mal aulad or jaan ye hai na these four things no doubt sayyidna abu bakr siddiq sacrificed his watan when he did hijrat from the city of his birth makkah al mukarrama and migrated to the city of madina al munawwara mal ki qurbani we already mentioned nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says nobody's wealth benefited me more than the wealth of sayyidna abu bakr siddiq aulad ki qurbani allahu akbar bahut ek mashhoor waqia ulama e karam se sunne rehne hain that during the battle of badr father was on one side son was on the other side abdul rahman was the name of the son and after the battle of badr a few years later abdul rahman radhiyallahu ta'ala who accepted islam and on one occasion he had uska mafhum he had a conversation with his father that oh my father i had many opportunities at the battle of badr 
to take my sword and to strike you and to take your life. But I didn't do so. I didn't do so. Why? Because you are my father. I am your son. Adab ihtaram. Huzur Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala who replied and gave a jawab that we should place in the depths of our heart. They said, oh my son, if you had come in front of me even once during the battle of Badr, I would not have hesitated. I would have taken my sword and removed your head from your shoulders. Why? Ishq wala soda ho Ishq and Farafir And then that leads me to my third point. That leads me to my third point. First point was what? Why is he considered the greatest personality after the Anbiya Mursaleen? Suhbat. Bolo tasi. Dusri. Man. They used to say that you educate the awam how? By telling them before the speech starts that place their hand on their ear. Place their hand on their ear. Hikmat kya hai? That when the muqarrib, the speaker speaks, whatever goes in through one ear will stay in. It won't go out the other ear. So I think this is what we need to start doing. Very quickly to conclude. Number one, I said companionship. Sohbat. Number two, I said qurbani. Sacrifices. And number three, why is he considered afdalul bashar ba'dal anbiya? Because he is that individual who unconditionally showed and demonstrated his ishq and muhabbat towards Rasulullah. <laughs> demonstrated his love towards Rasulullah. I end with this dua that Allah Almighty allow us to receive a portion of the muhabba and ishq that Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala had for Rasul Akram, Huzur Jani Jana, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa Ma Alayna, Illa Al Balaghul.